government officials, the Secretary of the Commission, Professor Musala. Um, I think there are also other officials from the Commission. I see some. And uh, and my staff who have been uh, with me, I think they are somewhere there the <laughs> who didn't sleep last night. And uh, uh, have been sleeping very few hours uh, in recent weeks. So they are here uh, as well. Members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, let me start where I should start. And where I should start is to apologize. I apologize to you, Mr. President, for keeping you waiting. I apolo apologize to all of you for keeping you waiting. There were certain challenges, but we were determined that the handover should happen today. I really appreciate your patience and, and your understanding uh, for the past, what, more than two hours uh, or even three. So I really apologize. I want you to know that uh, uh, it's not something that uh, I could have allowed to happen if there was a way of avoiding it. Uh, thank you very much. This day, has arrived. It has been four and a half years since the Commission was established. And it has been about four or three and a half years of the hearing of oral evidence. There was a time when I wasn't sure whether this day will come, but I'm very glad that it has come. It's a day when I have the honor and privilege to hand over to the President the final parts of the Commission's report. When we started with uh, the hearings in August 2018, we didn't know that it would take us this long to reach the point that we have reached. And of course, we have reached this point not because we have completed everything that fell within the terms of reference of the Commission. The terms of the, refer the, terms of reference of the Commission were very wide but we have reached this point because if we were going to investigate everything that fell within the terms of reference of the Commission, maybe we would take another 10 years because the terms of reference of the Commission contemplated that we would look at uh, even municipalities. So we would uh, not finish. It's been a long journey and there have been challenges during this journey for the Commission. But one of the things that I believe I should highlight today as I hand over the final report to the President 
is that it has been a period during which South Africans have shown us as the Commission wonderful support and love. Even when the Commission was going through very difficult times, South Africans showed us a lot of support and a lot of love. A number of members of the, a few members of the legal team that I know went through situations when their security needed to be beefed up because of the work that they do, they did in the commission. But they went on, they carried on. There were times when the investigation team and the legal team of the commission went on without getting paid for a few months. But one of the things that a lot of them told me was that this work was so important for the country, they would not leave the work of the Commission until really there was no other way and they stayed on. So I want to take this opportunity to thank members of the legal team for the work they have done for, for the country. I want to thank members of the investigation team of the Commission for the wonderful work they did for the country. I want to thank the various sectors of the Commission who assisted the Commission throughout this period. Dr. De Vier was the first secretary of the commission and Mr. Pedler was acting secretary for some time. Ms. Shabalala was the acting secretary for some time. And then we got uh, Professor Musala who has been, uh, who has worked very hard uh, for the commission. But I also want to thank the President for the support that he has shown for the work of the Commission. And I want to thank the Executive also as a whole for the support they have given us. I want to thank all political parties in Parliament who have also shown us support during this time. I want to thank my staff who have worked extremely hard for us to <clears throat> complete, particularly the reports over the past few months. I also want to thank their families, everyone's families who have had to do without a father, a mother, a brother for quite some time because they were busy with the work of the Commission. I also take this opportunity to thank my own family, my wife, Mam Tembu, and my children who have given me support throughout. I know that there was a time where when, because of my work in the Commission, they went through a very difficult time. Mm. But they stood by me, mm. and I just want to acknowledge the support that they have given me during this time. The report that we are handing over to the President consists of two parts. It's part five and part six. Part five has got volumes 
1 and 2. And uh, part 6 has got four volumes. They deal with a number of topics. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I just mentioned, for example, uh, some of the SOEs involved. It's SABC and uh, we, apart from SABC, state security is also covered. Friede Dairy Project is covered. Parliamentary Oversight is covered. We also have chapters that deal with money flows and how money that was uh, obtained through state capture was moved out of the country. We've got a chapter that deals with that. We've got, uh, uh, we deal also with the evidence of the president as a president of the country and president of the ANC. We deal with the evidence relating to the ANC. And then we have a lot of evidence relating to some individuals. We deal with water cliff lending as well. So all of those topics are, are covered. I did say at the first ceremony that we had decided that law enforcement agencies would not be covered because that, that was quite too wide. That was something that I raised with the president as well. But we cover all the other topics that we were meant to, to, to cover. I therefore just want to say once again to all South Africans, thank you for your support. We hope that with the work that we have done in the Commission, we have made some contribution towards the resolution of issues of corruption in our country and state capture. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Justice, for those humble words. You've always displayed effortlessly humility when you deal with conditions of adversity and uh, you have arrived here I have no doubt it is that humble trait Mr. President your response Thank you Minister Kungubele and Chief Justice Raymond Zondo the Secretary of the Commission Professor Itumele Musala the Director General in the Presidency, colleagues and uh, members of the media, and indeed fellow South Africans. As you have heard tonight, just in a minute or so, the Chief Justice will hand over the final volume of the report of the Judicial Commission of Inquiry into Allegations of State Capture, Corruption and Fraud in the Public Sector. As we know, the Commission was appointed to investigate the corruption that took place during the state capture era. State capture really was an assault on our democracy. It violated the rights of every man, woman and child in this country through the various reports released by the Commission we have come to understand what happened, who was involved, and we've also come to understand the effect that state capture had on our state, on our economy, as well as on our society. Close on six years have passed since former public protector, advocate Tulima Donzela, 
released her State of Capture report. The State of Capture report presented evidence of abuse of power and how public institutions were repurposed to enable corrupt activities to take place. Recognizing that the evidence that had been presented to her required more extensive investigation, Advocate Madonsela included among the remedial actions in her report that a judicial commission of inquiry should be established to investigate state capture. And this is what has brought us where we are today. The formal handover today of this final report represents the fulfillment of the remedial action that was set out in the State of Capture Report as issued by the then Public Protector. The work of this Commission is a vital part on our efforts to deal with State Capture. The report is far more than a record of widespread corruption, fraud, and abuse. It is also an instrument through which the country can work to ensure that such events, such as state capture, never ha ever happen again in our country. As a nation, we owe a great debt of gratitude to the chairperson of the commission, Chief Justice Raymond Zondo, for the monumental task that he and the evidence leaders, investigators, the lawyers, as well as researchers, have been undertaking over the past four years. And this has been work that they have done in service to our people and our country. I know, Chief Justice, how difficult this work was to you whenever I had occasion to meet you to talk about even matters of funding where some of the lawyers, the evidence leaders and many others who worked in the Commission had not been paid because of budgetary constraints and how you were pained by all this and how we were able with the Minister of Justice and Minister of Finance to find a way to cobble some money together so that you can complete your work. You exercise patience and I, my heart goes out to you and to your family because there were trying moments, particularly for your family, where we had to take certain actions because there were difficulties. I also wish to thank the Secretary of the Commission, Professor Musala, and those who preceded him as well, and the other Commission staff for the valuable contribution they have made to the national effort to confront state capture. I wish also to thank the many people who gave evidence before the Commission and especially to the whistleblowers, to the academics, to the investigators, and yes, to journalists as well, whose work contributed to uncovering many of the matters before the Commission. I wish to acknowledge the critical contribution by Advocate Madonzela, whose courageous and unflinching investigation set in motion the process to uncover these misdeeds. The submission of the final report today brings to an end the work of the Commission and marks the fulfillment of the weighty mandate given to Chief Justice Zondo in January of 2018. In line with the directive of the High Court, Within four months from this date, I will formally present to Parliament the full report of the Commission together with an indication of 
my intentions on the implementation of the Commission's recommendations. And I know that in this regard we will also be working together with members of Parliament to whom this report is going to be submitted and collectively we will deal with state capture and outline precisely what needs to be done. We have arranged for the administrative work needed to secure the archive of the work done by the Commission and ensure relevant institutions have access to the extensive evidence it has collected. This final report will be available tonight for download on the Presidency website, as was the case with the previous reports. This report provides us with the opportunity to make a decisive break with the era of state capture. And I call on all of us, one and all, to support the measures that all the structures of the state will have to take to return our country to the path of integrity, transformation and progress. And it will not only behove on the structures of the state, but our people as well. For our people have collectively been victims of state capture and we do need to deal with it. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. President, Your Excellency. In 2018, August, on a particular date, South Africans were glued on television to watch the first sitting of a commission that endured until today. Mr. President, you took the SIU report to the website. You are taking all the Commission's findings to the website unedited. If this is not your demonstration of your relentless pursuit of life of malfeasance, corruption, illegality, the word intention has to be found in a new dictionary. Thank you, Mr. President, for that. Uh, the next step, ladies and gentlemen, the two gentlemen are going to walk down where the Chief Justice is going to hand over the report physically. Can I invite both? <laughs> That's a moment of photo shooting. Uh, you want to, those who want to capture their best photos.
No. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Work, my God. <laughs> <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, explained, for the purpose of this exercise, which is purely the handing over of the report, you are afforded an opportunity once. In that once, each of the two gentlemen will take three questions. One thing I want to advise you, my mathematics or arithmetic still works. <laughs> Uh, Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, both of the two ladies, uh, Mr. Mbeche, so it's just three already. Right, that's four. 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 Yeah. Five. Last question. No, it can't be you, could it again? <laughs> Last question. Can you we ask take, two questions? You only take <laughs> twice, could it, if people allow you. you. Then you can take the second question. Can we'll I take go. the second question? All right, all right uh, Kalenai. <laughs> Thank all right. you very <laughs> much. All right, let's start with you. Um, Chief Justice, my first question is to you. When you said you were unable to make findings in relation to the criminal justice system because the issue was too broad, could you just give us further insight? Because, I mean, there was obviously quite disturbing evidence and claims made by people who claim to have been victims of malicious, politically motivated prosecutions, investigations by the Hawks, which appeared to be very linked to kind of state capture agendas. So can you please give us some insight into why you were unable to make findings in respect of that. Do you want to answer that question yes, first? That. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we did commence with investigations into what we called the law and LEA law and enforce, law enforcement agencies. Uh, I had uh, a team that was investigating that and uh, after quite some time it became clear to us that it would require a lot more time than we had thought to investigate properly such matters. For example, if you talk about whether in deciding to prosecute or not to prosecute, a prosecutor was acting in pursuit of state capture or some agenda, it's not always very easy to get evidence that will show that because you have got to leave room for the fact that the prosecutor could make the, that decision in good faith but be wrong. So just because he or she might turn out to have been wrong doesn't necessarily mean that she made that decision in pursuit of some agenda. So it, it's, it's, it's something that requires quite thorough investigation. But also in terms of uh, the places where uh, this investigation would have to uh, go. It's quite wide, you know, different provinces. So some investigation was started, but it became clear that if we were going to do a proper job, uh, it would require much more time, whereas there was quite um, a feeling that the Commission must complete the work in terms of what uh, it had already started looking at and basically the issues that Public Protector Tulima Donzela had identified. As you will recall, uh, the scope of the uh, Commission got widened quite extensively 
when the former president decided on the terms of the terms of reference. But the scope of the investigation that Albert Matonsela had had in mind was narrower. So so that 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 that, that is what happened. Um, secondly, uh, President Ramaphosa, I'm sure you're very aware uh, that. Okay. Sorry. Oh, that's a okay. That's the second, much the second okay. one. I'm watching you, Karen. <laughs> proceed. <laughs> now, my comrades, they agree with their okay, me. Karen, they deployed proceed. me to right. it. Okay, uh, Karen. <laughs> I'm sure you're very aware because it's been a considerable discussion about the phone call, the phone telephonic interactions betwe between yourself and the Chief Justice on the day that had been put forward for the release of the report. Given that your evidence is being evaluated in this report, given that an individual who has laid criminal charges against you is a subject of investigation within this report, we have been told not to ask you questions about that. Why did you believe that it was appropriate for you to have that telephonic con conversation, given the kind of speculation, innuendo, allegations of the report being altered that followed that interaction? Thank you. Mr. President. <laughs> the Chief Justice had wanted to communicate to me about the time of uh, handing over the report. <clears throat> we had at an earlier stage discussed that it would be good to have this type of occasion when the report would be handed over as it was done the very first time. And when he realized that he was not going to make that appointment, he felt the need to communicate with me and he said I do this with due respect in relation to the process of handing over the report. Now I think one has to take say maybe both of us at our word. At our word in that We've uh, dealt with each other with a great deal of integrity, not for once ever wanting to discuss the work, the substance of the work that the Chief Justice was doing, not for once even to discuss the evidence that I presented to the Commission which was led or was led by the Chief Justice and he has said that he has a chapter or so dealing with the evidence that I put forward to the Commission. I don't even know what that is and uh, for all I care because of the high regard I have for the Chief Justice he could be making a negative, he could have made a negative finding against me and which I will accept and it is the basis on which we deal with each other on these matters because the Chief Justice has to do his work without fear, without favour and without any form of prejudice. As the judge who has been chairing the Commission, he has been guided by precisely that underpinned his work with a great deal of honesty, fairness and integrity. So I cannot accept the innuendos and the suppositions that are being made that there was any way in which the Chief Justice and I could have discussed the substance of the work. It is quite demeaning actually because it is way, way, way below what the Chief Justice would do. I would not even know how to even ask the Chief Justice to comment on the substance of his work. It is completely out of nature. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Merger, it's your turn. No, my turn. No, no, I am <laughs> directing the program, correct? 
Um, uh, good evening to the Chief Justice and the President. Um, I have uh, questions for both. Um, maybe let me start with the Chief Justice. <laughs> yes, Miss. You lifted your hand for one question. So you will be taking other people's questions. So you've got one question. Thank you. Okay, okay, Minister, we, we, we had canvassed as, as, as a media. You've got one <laughs> question, Mr. Bridget. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, Chief Justice, <clears throat> there have been so many delays, and of course, you when you started, you, you apologized because uh, um, there's been a lot of work and challenges, as you had indicated. But are you not worried that... Uh, some people um, would think or oh, this could potentially compromise the credibility of the report and obviously you will not use social media as your measure but you can't simply ignore it because those are human beings who are commenting people even going as far as saying hey, something is being edited and stuff like that i know you not want to put substance to that but the essence of this question are you not worried that this could uh, compromise the credibility of the report, no matter how good it is, no matter how perfect uh, you thought you wrote it. Um, <laughs> Mr. President, um, you said uh, in one of the occasions, um, when, if there are some people, uh, let's say within your executive that are implicated, uh, you will take action. Um, I know we have, both of us haven't read it because uh, it's not available I, uh, on the internet as yet. In the event, some of your ministers or even yourself um, is uh, implicated in this report, would you take action? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nguyen. You've asked two questions. We accept that, uh, Mr. President. Oh, you start with me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much, uh, Minister. I don't know what is in this latest report. Uh, like you, I'm going to uh, start reading it uh, tonight. Um, and I'll go through it very, very carefully uh, on my flight to Cape Town. And I will making markings and notes and of course once one has gone through that uh, we will be able to form a view and it is this that I have said I will within four months be able to present to Parliament a full implementation plan in terms of what we are going to do I know you and many other people will be impatient, wanting immediate action tomorrow morning. But I think we have to follow the process, go through this whole plan that I've put to the nation, that within the four months period, we will come up with an implementation plan, which, as I've said, will take to Parliament, so that Parliament is uh, able to evaluate precisely the steps that are going to be taken. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice. Thank you, thank you, Minister. Well, Mr. Mbeje, uh, I have had occasion um, quite a few times over the past four and a half years to emphasize how important I think the work of this commission was. I have uh, indicated the lengths to which I have gone to try and make sure that if anything goes wrong, it shouldn't be because we didn't try to make sure that things were done right. That, that has been my approach, that has been my, the approach of uh, the Commission. But it doesn't mean that uh, there aren't situations where we have found ourselves uh, 
in a situation that we would have preferred not to be in. Um, we have had some delays. It would have been difficult to avoid most of those delays, if not all of them. But I am satisfied that we have done all that we could to make sure that if anything is found wrong with the report by a court, it should not be because we treated the report in a manner that didn't show that we appreciate how important it is. So, of course, I would have liked a situation where there were no delays and everything happened on time. Mm. Uh, I have shared with everybody that, um, you know, members of the legal team, members of the investigation team, so, uh, and staff have worked flat out over this period, particularly the past two years or so, uh, because there is this commitment to the work of the commission. You will remember that even during the times of the hearings, we would have two sessions, would sit during the day, sometimes sit in the evening. We could sit over public holidays. We sat on a Saturday, we sat on a Sunday. We have always thought that this work is very important for the country and we have dedicated ourselves to do everything we can to make sure that uh, the uh, work of the commission uh, is well taken care of. So people have got a right to go to court and challenge the report and uh, the commission will deal with those when they, when they come. But we have tried the best we can to try and uh, make sure that uh, uh, we don't have delays that we could have avoided. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, Quinita, I know you've been on fire, Benny. Question is for um, Chief Justice Raymond Sondo. My name is Konita Hanja from News 24. Chief Justice, it has been four and a half years where a lot has happened. As you said, a former president went to jail for defying this very inquiry. That's, that's not, doesn't happen every day. Just to ask you to follow up on my colleague, in hindsight, do you wish that you've done anything differently in this process? Do you have any regrets from these last four and a half years? And what has been a silver lining for you? If there's just one silver lining of, of these four and a half years and this report that's sitting here, what would that be? Thank you very much. Chief Justice. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I like evaluating my actions and my decisions from time to time because I believe that one should always be open to recognizing if one has made a mistake and be prepared to acknowledge it and, where necessary, apologize. Um, I Whenever I've looked back at the decisions that I've taken in the commission, I struggle to find any decision I've taken that I regret. I look back at decisions that I've taken, some of them very difficult, and I think when I look back, I think I would take the same decisions faced with the same situation again. I do tend to give myself a little bit of time to reflect before I take decisions. And um, so, so I, I, I can't remember, I can't think of any decision that I've taken um, uh, that I, I would uh, regret. The one thing which I would have liked to uh, have happened differently is the way we started with uh, the hearings and the, and the investigations. 
you know, ideally in a commission you would like a situation where you call, put together investigators and they investigate and finish their investigation and then you start hearings. You know, then it, it's more structured. Uh, you know exactly what to look, you, you know how many witnesses uh, you are going to have and so on. But we didn't have that uh, luxury because there was a huge demand that the commission should start with hearings. So as we were hearing some evidence, the investigators were continuing to investigate. And uh, as a result of that, you would find that in the morning we might be hearing ev the evidence of a witness under ESCOM, but in the afternoon we are hearing evidence from a witness under Transnet, simply because we wanted to use the time that we had. We didn't want to say we want to hear evidence relating to ESCOM until we have finished all of it and then go to Transnet. If we did it that way, we would not be <laughs> done by now. So that, that, that's, that, that's the part that uh, we didn't have much of, of a choice on. But uh, yes, no, I have no regrets uh, whatsoever. Thank you. Uh, Govan? Thank, <clears throat> thank you so much. It's uh, Govan Whittles from ENCA. My question also for the Chief Justice. Uh, Chief Justice Zondo, do you believe that if this report that you've presented is implemented in its entirety, it will sufficiently protect South Africa state from being captured using the ways that you've uncovered uh, during your hearings here? Is it a good enough firewall for the future? Well, I don't want to make anybody think that uh, this report is all you need to rid South Africa of state capture or to make sure that state capture never happens again. But I do believe that it will the recommendations that have been made, if they are implemented, will make a significant contribution to us that goal. Ms. Bate? Um, I'm very tempted to try and wrangle two questions since a colleague did so, and if I were to, I might ask our president about the uh, screen save on his tablet, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> Chief Justice, uh, it's been a long four years for you, for us, for many, many people in this room and for the country. An obvious question, but did state capture occur? And if so, who was its ultimate architect? We know that some witnesses claim it was the Guptas who had the former president in their pocket, and other witnesses claimed that it was the former president who had the Guptas in his pocket. What was your finding? I'm going to disappoint you and uh, do things the way I did at the, when we had the first handover. Uh, when I said uh, I won't talk about what's in the in the report, uh, but obviously you are going to, to to read all about it. Thank you. Th thank you, Eric. Uh, Karen, Karen, you you are the last. You want the third one? You did. She asked too. You did. She asked too. Thank you very much. We are done. We are done. We are done. No, we are done. No. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, for okay. The, the president wants to entertain that. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. President. Thank you. Chief Justice. Media journalist Zwai, <laughs> thank you very much for the cooperation. We end at this point. Thank, thank you. you.